Jim Crow laws, a huge part of America's dark past. Jim Crow laws are regularly referenced by politicians and on social media. So in this video, we are going to talk about what they were, how they came to be, and what happened for America to finally do away with them. But before we get started, I want to thank you for watching Ben Explains, and if you like this video and want to see more videos where I explain things, hit that subscribe button down below. Now let's get into it. Jim Crow was originally a derogative term for an African American, and became an umbrella term for not only laws passed to push African Americans down in society in the South, but also social rules for etiquette aimed to keep whites above blacks in social settings. Following the Civil War and up until 1964 with the passage of the Civil Rights Act. For example, a black man was never supposed to offer to shake hands with a white man because if he did, that would be implying equality. But how did we get here? Following the Civil War and Union soldiers leaving the South, they began to pass and enforce black codes, which is the root of Jim Crow. Black codes dictated how newly freed slaves could work, attempting to force freed slaves into indentured servitude. If you broke one of these black codes, you could be fined or forced into a labor camp where you would do work for no pay. In the 1880s, with limited job opportunities excluding indentured servitude in the rural South, many freed slaves moved to the cities, making the whites who lived there feel threatened and demanding the government do something to limit opportunities for African Americans. Needless to say, local and state governments were all too willing to oblige. What followed marked the beginnings of the Jim Crow era. Local governments began passing laws to segregate blacks from whites. This included banning African Americans from public parks, segregating schools, train stations, bus lines, theaters, water fountains, and even hospitals. Some states even required separate textbooks in schools and separate Bibles to swear on in court. And you get the idea. Pretty much anything and everything that could be segregated was. In 1892, a man named Homer Plessy, who was one-eighth African American, got on a train labeled whites only. After refusing to leave, he was arrested and charged for violating the Separate Cars Act. Plessy hired a lawyer and took it to court, and in 1896, it reached the Supreme Court, where Plessy's claim that the Separate Cars Act was unconstitutional. It was dismissed, and the court ruled separate but equal, a saying that went on to fuel more widespread Jim Crow laws to be passed. These laws were able to continually be passed in the South, mostly due to laws making it extremely difficult for African Americans to vote. The main ones being a requirement for newly registered voters to take a literacy test, which was a ridiculously difficult, and then pay a poll tax to get registered. The catch was there was a grandfather clause stating that if your grandfather could vote before the Civil War, then you were exempt from paying a poll tax or taking a literacy test. Essentially meaning if you were a native southerner, you could vote, but if you were a newly free slave or immigrant, you couldn't, or at least it would be very difficult to. It was so extreme that in Louisiana, only 1% of the African American community was able to vote. During the era of Jim Crow, oftentimes white supremacist groups, chief among them the KKK, took it upon themselves to punish African Americans for breaking Jim Crow laws. Punishments for breaking Jim Crow laws could be lynchings, hangings, being shot, castration, or in some cases being burned at the stake. There was an estimated 3,440 black men and women lynched during Jim Crow, most notably in the red summer of 1919 following Americans returning home from World War I. There was 25 race riots, or mass lynchings, in major U.S. cities. It was also very common in the South to have all-white juries essentially giving whites immunity to crimes against African Americans and condemnation for any crime an African American was charged with. The fall of the Jim Crow era came after World War II when America felt pressure from its allies to make changes. President Truman ended the poll tax in 1948 and encouraged equal employment. But perhaps the biggest landmark against Jim Crow was in 1954 with the Supreme Court case Brown v. Board of Education where it was made clear that separate but equal is not equal. And following a rise in civil rights advocacy in the 60s, it officially ended in 1964 with the passage of the Civil Rights Act. 
and this has been a brief history of the Jim Crow era. Thank you so much for watching Ben Explains, and if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, comment them down below. If you liked this or learned anything from this video, click the thumbs up, and if you want to see more videos like this, click subscribe. If you like this, may I suggest one of these?